Hey everybody, it is The Dyes. Hi, I'm Jenny. And I'm John. Happy holidays to everyone. Yes, Merry Christmas everyone. We're happy to be with you today and we're glad that uh, we were asked to do this video today. Yeah. We wanted to talk a little bit about what some of the initiatives, the holiday initiatives, over the past handful of years done with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the impact that those initiatives have had on us um, individually, but also, I guess, more significantly as a couple. Yeah, it's interesting because, uh, gosh, it was a few years ago, a handful of years, that we met at the initiative uh, kickoff for A Savior is Born. Mm -hmm. And subsequent to that, we've had multiple years of Light the World. And uh, we've been able to be integrally involved in all of those activities. So we just wanted to mention a few of those things. We feel, um, you know, the holidays are a time of service, a time of giving. It's a time to remember our Savior and do the things that He would do if He were here. Those acts of service can be very large, very small, right? As simple as giving somebody a smile, sometimes when we don't feel like it, or huge acts of service, which uh, are, I'd say, fewer and far between, but still things that happen. Yeah. Um, like John mentioned, it was five years ago at the uh, preview for the initiative, the hashtag was A Savior is Born, which of course is a wonderful you know, theme for, for the holiday season. Uh, but once Light the World was given, there was something different, something special about that, and that's why it's been continued over the past few years. Absolutely, yes. Um, I think it's uh, yeah been multiple years that it has continued. It will continue again this year, in 2020, and we're excited for that. Um, today, specifically, we want to talk about something that we did last year. Um, all of you familiar with Light the World, you're familiar with the service calendar, right? Usually goes through um, multiple days of things that you can do for others, and they're themed. And, but Well, and the good thing about that, what I really like about that calendar is that it looks at each day in the month of December, leading up to Christmas, of course, and it looks at the things that we would normally do and, you know, kind of frames it in the way of that's something that the Savior would do, you know, feed, feed the hungry. Um, what it isn't is, is some sort of huge new service project because no one needs one more thing to add to their to-do list, especially during the holidays. Absolutely. These are small, actionable items that can be done um, and even things that we would do anyway, but with, a, with, a, with new eyes, I guess, a new intention. Yeah, so one of the big things that has taken off in recent years are the Light the World giving machines. Mm -hmm. And those have done extremely well. We've seen those start with just a single location in Salt Lake City to last year, multiple locations worldwide. And that's really what we want to talk about today. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that we were able to, to do to extend the reach of those giving machines uh, last year in particular. The, the idea of a giving machine is a physical location, like a vending machine. With a vending machine, you go up, you put in your change or your cash or even swipe your card, and what you receive is something for yourself. A bottle of water, candy bar, you know, a snack, whatever you might need. The idea with the giving machines is that you do the same. You put your money in, and what you are doing is you're providing something for someone else. It's a gift for someone else. The first year, there were lines in the Joseph Smith Memorial Building in downtown Salt Lake City out the door. Around, the, I mean, it was it was so busy. And I believe the second year there were five cities. Yes. So it was. Do you remember what they were? I don't. Do you? I think I do. Salt Lake, Gilbert, mm -hmm. Arizona, New York City, London, and Manila in the Philippines. Um, and I, I did. I swear I did not look that up before wow. we recorded That's that. Good. Uh, That's really good. And then the exciting thing about that is that more people would be able to participate. They would be able to physically go to the machines and have that experience. Well, as you can imagine, last year, 2019, it was very exciting to find out, are they going to do the giving machines again? And if so, where will they be? And they announced that they were going to double the locations. There were 10, 10 cities. Yes. Do you remember they, anymore? Well, they added Denver. Mm -hmm. They added um, others. They did add others. They added Laie. Yes, they did. 
they added, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so please forgive us for that. But there were 10. But there were 10 total. And uh, it was, so for a lot of people, that was very, very exciting. However, for even more people, we, we heard a lot of people, we saw people online saying, and through other, you know, various channels, they would say, well, I would love to do this. My family and I have been talking about this. We've been saving up our money, but we can't drive nine hours to attend a giving machine. So what do we do? Yeah, that was the problem, right? Was even with 10, many places in the world, this didn't reach from a physical perspective. So the question was, could we extend the reach of these through some virtual perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Have it be virtual giving. And uh, within the church and outside the church, we hear this term proxy, right? Mm -hmm. Working on behalf of somebody else, doing something for someone else that can't be done by that individual. So Jenny had this idea to create proxy giving machines. Tell us more about that. So proxy giving machines uh, is essentially, it operates from Instagram. Not owned by Instagram, it's just an Instagram account that I created. It, the handle is at proxy giving machines. So what I did was I put the word out through various social channels about this account, this Instagram account, Proxy Giving Machines. At the time we were living uh, pretty much, oh, <laughs> between two locations. One of the others was Orem, Utah. <laughs> so uh, I was living, we were living between two locations where giving machines were. And so we had access to two locations. The reason that's pertinent is because while there are global organizations that partner for these giving machines. They're also local organizations. And between Salt Lake County and Utah County, uh, there were different organizations. So what people would do is they would contact me and they would say, hey, I am a teacher. And this cause, this local cause that you know is represented in a giving machine in Orem means a lot to me. And so I'm sending you this amount of dollars and I would like very much for you to please purchase this item, you know, children's school supplies filled backpack or an art set uh, for me. And then what I would do is I would, I would get that money and I would go to the giving machines and I would make a video of those transactions and post it on the Instagram account. Yeah, and I think that's where the meaningful act of service, it was, it was kind of an uber act of service, right? You were serving somebody else by acting as proxy. They were actually giving the financial means for that uh, active service, whatever it was to take place. So Jenny, what were some of the most meaningful acts of service that people asked you to purchase? Hmm, that's a good question. One of the most popular items in the giving machines, of course, was the idea of buying a goat or three chickens. What that does for a family in a developing country is it provides them not only food, a source of food, but also a source of income uh, depending on on their needs and their location of course the idea of dispensing a goat in a vending machine is absurd but people really liked that idea so there are a lot of people who were really excited to to do that and see that card drop to the bottom of the machine um, one that i really liked was someone who wished to remain anonymous it was a very generous donation he made sure to mention that he and his wife were a mixed faith couple but together what they could definitely always come together on was the idea of serving others. And this was something that they wanted to contribute to together. Other families reached out and talked about how their children had saved money and the kids were excited. And so they chose things like a soccer ball or you know something other that, uh, another thing that a kid would like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, there was, there was also one where a woman whose birthday is close to Christmas outsourced this idea when friends were asking what can I do for you for your birthday she said you can donate you can help me I would love to be able to to buy a goat for for a family or provide meals for someone close by in our local area and uh, she got donations I think from five or six different states in the United States so that was a rather big transaction as well but very meaningful in a lot of ways so what can we learn from uh, light the world campaigns from uh, years gone by. I think it's important for us to note that regardless of what's happening around us, pandemic or no pandemic, you can serve others. There are ways, both small and large, that you can serve others. If there are no giving machines, there's still ways to give. 
if you want to give of your time or of your talent or of your monetary means, there's still ways to do that. If nothing else this year, we've learned to think outside the box, to get creative and to be creative in, in how we operate daily. And I think that that absolutely applies to the giving season. So before we sign off, maybe we should wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We hope your holidays go extremely well. Yes, thanks so much for joining us today. And we hope that you and your loved ones are healthy, happy, safe, and that you're able to find ways in your own life to light the world this season. Thank you.